This video will give a brief explanation of the various parameters to be found in your new F4 controller. We ought to stress at the outset that for 90% of applications, there is no need to start paging through the different parameters and making adjustments. In its simplest form, all you need to do is watch the short video about how to connect up and wire your controller, then watch the short video about how to make sure that you have the controller set for the right thermocouple type, and then watch the short video on the auto-tuning of the PID parameters, following which your controller should give you good control. In order to access the user level parameters, simply press the set button once. The first parameter is the PVOF process value offset parameter. This parameter allows for a manual manipulation of the process offset that may exist between the measurement of the pro and the reading on the controller PV display. The next parameter is the OUTL or output level parameter. Only meaningful when you are using an analog output like a 4 to 20 milliamp or a voltage output. The next parameter is the run parameter. The default condition for this parameter is on, indicating that the control output is being determined by the controller. If you push the down button once, you can turn the output off. This will turn both the alarm output and the control output off. If you press the up button once, you get back to the run being on. If you push the up button once more, the next parameter is the AT1 parameter. This is the auto-tuning mode 1. With this parameter, the auto-tune function will be performed at the set point. Press the up button once more and you reach the next parameter called AT2, the auto-tuning mode 2 parameter. With this parameter, the auto-tuning function will be performed at a set point 10% below the actual set point of the controller. It does this to avoid forcing the temperature too high above the current set point in order to protect your process. The next parameter is the MAN or manual parameter. This is the parameter you would choose if you want to be able to force the output up and down from 0 to 100 percent. A word of caution, if you put the controller into manual mode the controller itself will not be monitoring how hot your process is getting. It will simply continue heating at the level at which you have set it. The next level is the alarm level. To access those parameters, you push the set and the sideways shift button together for a few seconds and the top display will change and read level and the bottom will say alarm level. In order to scroll through the various parameters in the alarm level, simply press the set button. So if we push the set button once, the first parameter is the alarm 1 set point. This is where you would adjust the set point for your alarm 1. The next parameter is the alarm 1 hysteresis. This is where you'll adjust the hysteresis to be used on the alarm. The next parameter is the A1FU. This is the alarm 1 function. Here you can choose different functions that will be used for this alarm. For more information regarding these functions and the use of the alarms in general, please refer to the manual that was supplied with your controller or go to our website and look at the F4 user manual. The next level is the soft level. So to reach the soft level, we push the set and the sideways shift button together until the top display says level. Then we use the up button once to change it to the soft level.
In order to access the different parameters in the soft level, simply press the set button. So we press the set button 1. The first parameter is the ramp parameter. This is where you set a one-step ramp that will become functional when you power up the controller. If we push the set button again, the next parameter is the soft parameter. This is the parameter that allows you to limit the power being delivered to your process during startup for a certain amount of time. Next level is the PID level. You reach this by just pushing the up button once and it, you can see the controller reads level and PID. In order to access the parameters in the PID level, just push the set button. The first parameter is the PB, which is the proportional band. The next parameter is the TI or integral parameter. The next parameter is the TD or derivative parameter. Those three parameters are the parameters that decide how the controller controls your heating elements. And we suggest that you use the F4 auto tuning process in order to set them best for your process. The next parameter is the manual reset parameter. The next parameter is the anti-reset wind-up parameter. Both of those are not normally set by the operator. The next parameter is the cycle time for your controller. You will find that the cycle time will be set to 15 seconds for a relay output controller and one second for a solid state relay output controller. Press the set button once more and this is where we choose the different levels. If we use the up button, the next level is the option level. Press the set button once and the first parameter in this level is the type. This is where you choose your thermocouple type. The next parameter after this is the, where, is the unit parameter. And this is where you choose whether you're working in degrees C or in degrees Fahrenheit. The next parameter is where you would select a decimal point if you require one. The next parameter is the action parameter. This is always set to reverse for heating and to direct for cooling. The next parameter is the LOLT, which is the low level of your measuring range. The next parameter is the HILT, which is the high level of your measuring range. The next parameter is a filter parameter and we strongly suggest that you don't adjust this parameter. The next parameter is called PTNE and has not been used on your controller. The last parameter is the EROP. Again, this is not being used on your controller. The next parameter is the lock parameter. This is the parameter where, if you read in the manual, you can lock different levels so that the operators cannot access them. The next parameter is the SVOF, that's a set value offset. This works in a similar way to the parameter we spoke about earlier, the PVOF. The next parameter is the ID. This is the address if you're using RS485. And the next parameter is the board. This is where you set the board rate for RS485 communications. We are back to level. So now having completed adjusting any of the parameters that we wanted to adjust, we simply press the set and the up button together and it'll take us back to the normal operating state of the controller.